Hello and welcome to Teen Mom Trash Talk. This is episode 147 and I am your host, comedian Tracy Carnazzo, joined by my co-host, Noelle Winters Herzog. That's me. Noelle, this is um, such an exciting season of Teen Mom OG, season eight, episode... Oh, I didn't even write down the episode number. <laughs> That's not helpful episode for this. one million and eight. I know. Oh, my God. Now I have to... It's episode... Uh, oh, my God. I don't even know. I need, like, an assistant. Episode 22. You do, you do need an assistant. Isn't that amazing? Episode 22. <laughs> yeah, this is stupid. Um, but I will tell you this. Is yeah. next week the finale? Really? I no, didn't see I just the coming made attractions. Up. I just made that Oh, up. okay. Okay. I think I made that okay. up. I'm pretty sure I made that up. <laughs> Maybe. Who knows? But I feel like that's fast. Maybe not. Who knows? I don't know. If anyone knows, please go to our group, uh, Teen Mom Trash Talk Podcast, and just tell us what's happening there. Um, make sure you're joining our Facebook group if you want to talk about the show, if you want to talk about the podcast, and make sure you're joining our Patreon P A T R E O N dot com slash trash talk podcast, where you will get over a hundred bonus episodes of all different kinds of things. We have a podcast called BS Not T Mom Related. We have a podcast called Unexpected Trash Talk. We have uh, 90 Day Fiance Self Quarantine Trash Talk. And you're just going to uh, get so much access to so many things. We have a secret group. It's going to be amazing, amazing, amazing. So join over there and you're not going to regret it. All right. It's all the rage. It's all the rage. Okay. So I'm stifling hiccups like you. I want you to know. Are you really? <laughs> uh -huh, what did you eat? Uh -huh. uh, lasagna. I oh. ate lasagna earlier. You brought it for me and then oh, okay. I ate some more, but I ate it fast. Okay. I was going to say, mm -hmm. what, why do you have indigestion? Uh, no, I just, I was like, oh, I have to hurry up with the podcast. <laughs> Here we are. Okay. So Macy, let's start off with okay. her. So Bentley has a girlfriend and we find out that Bentley's girlfriend was talking shit about him mm -hmm. i mean poor bentley he's so cute i think he's such a good kid he's adorable and i really like him but uh -huh. he confronted the girlfriend he was like did you talk shit about me she's like absolutely yes i did which i thought was hilarious uh-huh and then he's like pc you later right and then they broke up so mm -hmm. macy wants taylor to talk to him and have like you know a man to man with him but that's the thing. She wants him to have like the pre birds and bees talk. I know. It's like, how many talks do we have about this? So she said that uh, <laughs> it was so funny because I heard Dr. Drew's voice in my head when she said that. She's like, uh -huh. children of teen parents are more likely to become teen parents themselves. I was like, OK, right. it Dr. sounded Drew. like the end of the episode. Yes. Right. And I was like, all right, Dr. Drew, relax. So she said that her parents were teen parents. Right. And I think that she had mentioned that before and that the cycle basically repeats itself. And I didn't know that, to be honest with you. Right. Well, uh, I guess that's why her dad had to write so many bad checks. Because <laughs> he was a teenager. He didn't have the money. <laughs> is, um, is Macy an only child? I don't M know. Maybe? I think so, because I've never heard her We've talk never, about a yeah. sibling. I've yeah. never seen any other gingies. I don't know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so w now we go and we see Ryan. Ryan's tooth is not filming in this episode. Thank you, Tracy. <laughs> <laughs> he was trying the to way negotiate. You it wasn't what I was expecting. <laughs> yeah, no, he was trying to negotiate a contract. They wanted to hear his side of the story. <laughs> and he was like, if you want to hear my side of the story, you pay me more. And they were like, no, thank you. And he left. And I heard that he actually sold uh, his story to Starcasm. Oh, our... <laughs> He's Here's like, if you want to know right? my side. <laughs> is this editing or is it just poor oral okay. hygiene? I, no, no, no. This isn't editing like Photoshopping. <laughs> But no, 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 because it's like, here's the thing. You're missing a tooth or part of a tooth. You get it fixed and you're suddenly missing it again. OK, so here's the thing. Do you remember yeah. last season when Ryan's tooth left? The, yes, that's what I mean. Yeah. Unless he got it like bonded and it broke off again. Maybe he only had like temporary. No, like sometimes when you, you if you crack a tooth and they yeah. bond it, like it could break off again. Like it's not it's not. Great. Oh, it's not permanent. Right. Right. Okay. Like maybe I mean, it should be permanent. Like he needs an implant. Right. Yeah. He needs something going on. Um, yeah. I don't know, man. So Mackenzie is Mac is now laughing with Ryan about Bentley's breakup. 
I can't believe how nasty they are. Like she has morphed into him. Yeah, they're like the a team. They're team against Bentley. I wouldn't want to go see my dad if all him and his wife were gonna do is like make fun of me like that. Like in right, a it's like okay. Way. Well, first of all, he's tooth left. Um, <laughs> he's he's breastfeeding the dog. Uh-huh. He <laughs> likes the dog more than me, a hundred percent. Right. So it's like I don't know. There's a lot more. So they're laughing, and Ryan's basically saying that like Bentley's gonna be soft like Drake. Yeah, he's like soft like a Twinkie fillin, basically. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, girls are just going to break up with him to make fun of him. And it's like, what? Yeah, that's really, that's just a mean thing to say. Why are you saying that about your own kid? I don't know. But it was funny when they were like, wow, I guess Bentley's going to live the single life again. That was funny. That was cute. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was like, oh, my God. Uh, so now he's playing ping pong with Taylor and he's confessing to Taylor. He said that they never kissed. So that's good. I don't know if right. I believe him. I guess I believe him. I don't know if I believe him. They could have. I bet they like tap kissed. You they never know, though. Full fifth on grade, make out. Fifth grade could kind of go either way. <laughs> it could. You could be like a teen mom very soon. Right. <laughs> or, or you, you could, could be like, like a very, nun. <laughs> right. You could be very naive. So, um, okay. So this is my problem with the speech that Taylor what? gives him. I don't mind Taylor and I don't mind Taylor even talking to him. And I see like, but Taylor, what does that mean? Okay. Cause I'm 11, right? How okay. old is he? 12? Oh, he's 11. He's 11. He's like, respect women and have them respect you back. Right. What does that mean? Taylor? He's giving like generic speeches, like what he thinks he should say. Right, but it doesn't mean anything to a kid. I guess. I, I think that he's just trying the best that he can. I I liked when he said, um, if you ever want to talk to your mom and you don't know how to approach her, yes. come to me and I'll help you. Because I think that I there are so many things I didn't know how to approach my dad or my mom about. And it would have been really yes. nice to have someone to talk Taylor? to about that. Well, ta- Taylor, <laughs> yeah. I would have liked to talk to Taylor about that. We are the Hello, same Taylor? height after all. <laughs> Hello, Taylor. <laughs> Taylor, I know that you're three years old right now, but listen, I need, I need some ab- advice. <laughs> <laughs> how do I, I to- ask my dad, you know, <laughs> how to go on a first date with the, can I go on the first date with this guy? You know, and Taylor's like, don't worry, I got you. I'm going to call Ed real quick. Mm-hmm. Ed would be like, okay, sure. <laughs> Hello, baby. <laughs> <laughs> no, but do you, you understand what I'm saying though, right? Because it's like respect women. Like, what does that mean? Like, don't bop them in the head. Like be nice to them. Yeah, I guess he means that like mean just any- be respectful like, okay. and have people be respectful towards you. Like don't sure. put up with BS. Okay, but that does that's again doesn't mean anything. I'm eleven. I don't know what that means. So I would say like, what do you think he should have said? Okay, here we go. How'd you know okay. I was gonna get there? I would have been like, um, Bentley. You need to treat girls very, very nicely, especially a girl that's your girlfriend. But any other girl in your class, like I would never say anything rude to them. I would never call them a name. And you can't let anyone call you a name either. And also like never make her feel like you don't like her and never say anything silly to your friends about her and never like specific it's kind no it's kind of like like you saying things like that. It makes me remember just like how maternal you are. Oh, thank you. But I'm. This is what I yeah. tell you all the time. I always say, like Noel, <laughs> you have to be nicer to boys. No, you would tell me, Noel, like <laughs> stop being so nice to boys. Yeah, stop being nice to boys because yeah. I'm going to kill them all. Yeah. No, but I mean, yep. you understand what I'm saying, though. Like, I get that. Though. You have to be because what does that mean? Respect women. You have okay, to be it's more like specific. That. I don't hate them. Yeah. But you had to be super specific because you don't know that these things are wrong. Like, we are balls of clay when we're right. little. We literally right. know nothing. And that's why when people blame kids for being assholes, it's like, where do you think they figured that out? Of course. No, I get it. I just like that Taylor tried. At least he No, tried. no, I like that he tried. Um, I just think that maybe, uh, so now that he... Be more specific. Right. So now he, like, broke the seal. And now it's like, Uh okay, so now let's talk about Bentley. Like, what did this girl say about you? And you know that that's never okay for someone to say that about you, right? Mm -hmm. And like like that kind of stuff. And you know that when she says that about you, like that just shows that like she's a little bit scared or she's being mean or maybe she doesn't feel good about herself. Right. And that what she's saying isn't true. Right. Right. So that's what I mean. Like instead of saying like, aha, whatever. 
So now, um, also now at the end, uh, wow, who, who are these people's names? Macy and Taylor. <laughs> I love you. Macy and Taylor are talking mm-hmm. about, um, the producers ask, do you think that Ryan would be good to talk to Bentley? No, I and she's like, no, thank you. I don't think Ryan would be good to talk to Bentley. And you know what? She's absolutely right. I know. She's like, no, he, no, he doesn't like him. That's the thing. It's not, listen, it has nothing to do with Ryan being on drugs. It's nothing like that. It's just Ryan isn't nice. That's Ryan's really nice. all there is yes. to it. Right. Because you know what, though? It's like even a parent that's an addict or whatever, like, can tell you what you're supposed to do. Of course, because they know what's right and what's wrong. Just because they made a bad decision sure. doesn't mean they don't know. Like, I tell if people he- how to be nice to people, but, like, I'm not. Truth. That's <laughs> truth. At least you're self-aware. I am. <laughs> and then at the end of the scene, you see, like, Jen and Larry taking care of Ryan's kids, and Ryan's just holding the dog. Because that's the only thing that Ryan cares about, which... Makes me feel kind of nice because, like, I love animals. I know. And if and you love like, animals, that makes me like you. Right. You're like, how bad of a guy could he possibly be if he's nice to this dog? Right. But why is he nice to his son? <laughs> because he's not I a think dog. he just resents him. He, he just does resents resent Bentley. him. Mm-hmm. Okay. So let's talk about Kate. So she has been making Veda her own baby food for six months. Right. And she found this company that makes baby food. So she's talking to her hair lady about it. Mm-hmm. Who's doing? Who's curling her hair in the kitchen? Okay, I mean, obviously, I hate that that she's curling her hair even in the kitchen. What? Also, what? what's with the hair? Okay, do you think she's like? Okay, listen, um, <laughs> it's Tuesday. <laughs> Can you make me look like I have like a very cheap wig on? Not no no, uh-uh, <laughs> not like that. Like a not very cheap. cheap <laughs> a very cheap wig on. Like you know, like, like a Dollar General wig. Yes. <laughs> and the girls like say no more, fam. <laughs> <laughs> Those memes are my favorite. Say no right? more, fam. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. So she's talking to her hair lady about um, Little Spoon, which actually. Right is not, I know that you're thinking this, is not Tyler. Ooh, you're just, girl, you be killing him today. Okay, <laughs> but she's sing-song talking. Did you hear her in this scene? Show me. Show me. Okay. Show me how. <laughs> she's like, you know, I just found a, a company that makes baby food, and, like, they make the food, and then, like, you have to go to the grocery store, <laughs> and you make the food, so they're like, come to New York, and then you could just come to New York, and then, like, they they said, like, come here, so I was like, okay, <laughs> and then I was like, sometimes I make corn, and then they were, and I'm like, why is she talking like that? It's you should, uh, I don't you know. should rewatch the scene. You really should. I, 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 I should. I have to tell you, and I'm no BS. I was enamored by her hair. <laughs> I know. It's like, wait, what are you even talking about? I don't even know it's anything like, about baby happening? food. <laughs> right. I can't hear you. I don't know anything about baby food. I just know that you have plastic in your hair now. Okay. So now she goes, uh, so I'm going to go to New York City and I'm going to meet with this company, but I don't know why I'm meeting with this company. Uh, but they just said stop by our offices. So well, she wants to partner up. No, but she just doesn't know what. Like, what does that even uh, mean? Because she's not a human being. She does not know anything about like how businesses work, how the no. world works. Nothing. Tyler ordered one shirt for production. He's <laughs> like, "Why is this five hundred dollars?" And they're like, "We ordered a whole bolt of fabric to make that shirt." It's true. Yeah, this is so now. Um, she's gonna go to New York City, so April's gonna watch the kids. She's gonna put no, them in that's their, great. She, you know, I'm tank. so glad that Kate is. <laughs> I'm so <laughs> glad that Kate's like such a good mom that she is actually making Veda's food, but then Veda can go stay with the addict. Well, because to be honest with you, after Veda drinks an entire bottle of Colt 45, she really <laughs> does need some organic peas. <laughs> <laughs> After she huffs that secondhand smoke all day. (laughs) After she huffs the glue. (laughs) She really needs some some spring vegetables in her life. (laughs) Um, So now she's in New York and she's meeting with Little Spoon, not Tyler. Okay. Right. Not Tyler. Uh Uh-huh. And they're at a bar. They're at Rosie O'Grady's, which is right across the street from like Carnegie Hall. Um, Okay. It is like a bar that has like a restaurant in it. 
Right. That's what I figured. It was one of those, like uh-huh. a McFadden's. Uh-huh. Yeah. And she's like, uh-huh. wow, this is so fancy. And apparently this is the first time they've seen more than like one set of silverware on the table, like a salad fork. I and wonder if they like, ordered hot water to dip it in. They probably did. And she's <laughs> like, Tyler and her are like, whoa, look at all these forks, man. City of the real silver. <laughs> City of dreams, man. I heard the streets ah. are paved. The streets are paved with gold out here. <laughs> so now they're uh-huh. <laughs> she's meeting with them, but she has to present her ideas. Now, let me just tell you something. Okay. I am um like because you know, like I'm a doctor, I'm a reverend, I'm a lawyer. Like, you know, I'm all right. these things. Like I also worked in marketing for a long time. Right. Well, you actually really <laughs> did that. I actually did. That's a real story. Um and if she is there to present her ideas, they are using her for marketing her ideas right right like you don't what what are they offering her for her ideas right now nothing she's gonna go and pitch them things like come on Uh what are you doing but that's what i didn't understand what was going on first she's like i'm gonna partner with them and it's like girl basically you're gonna post them on your social media right that's what you mean yeah but now you're just giving them all of your ideas too and what are they doing for you no, exactly. Mm-hmm. So now they're using her. So she says uh, when she's in the office that the first 1,000 days of feeding the baby is the most important. <laughs> and then after that. Um, it doesn't matter. She could just only have the Colt 45. She could only have the Colt 45 in a Newport. <laughs> <laughs> I and guess she'll I don't know. a bang. And to be honest with you, she just cut her bang and it's like a little choppy. I know it is a freshly cut bang. I can't deal with the My Little Pony ponytail, though. I can't deal. Guess what? She has full, full wig hair and she Mm -hmm. goes into the office. Mm hmm. What are these people thinking? These people are on crystal meth. The way that they greet her. Have you oh, because that's those are that's young marketing women. That's how it is. Oh my god! And yeah, like, I'm it's watching very, it's it, a, and it's I'm like, like young, oh come when on. When we used to have to like meet with agencies, yeah, ooh, that's the girls. I'll tell you something. When I I catered a job a few months ago, and it was for like a, a big office like this, like it was like a marketing company, I believe, mm-hmm. and they were all so like, hey, oh, woman business, this yeah, that. And it's like me. cool, but it was like leave me alone. Like yeah, I want to no, set up. Is- this food yeah i did love her snake print jacket but it did not close not even a little bit and i know how you feel about that tracy i tried on my one of my north faces the other day and it wouldn't zipper and i'm like okay well this okay is well that's my home. real <laughs> that's really pointless <laughs> yeah no, no no not that type of north face like a thin windbreaker almost oh, i just okay, grew yeah. out of it yeah no <laughs> what was it like mm-hmm. a 3t it was an extra small. Yeah. Things have changed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so mm-hmm. now what is with this entire look though? So you go Who, to her look. These, yes. So to be honest with you, I'm going to tell mm-hmm. you, um, if I were going to New York city yeah. to meet with like a marketing team or like a, co- I would be like, make my makeup look like the no makeup look. I would be like, I'm going to wear all black. All black. I want a sleek blowout and I want like a nude lip. Neutral makeup. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Well, Kate was like, you remember when you did my hair the other day? <laughs> uh, dirtier and bigger. She was like fancy free. Like she did not care. She was like smoky eye or a red lip. Psh, why not both? That's like my pet peeve too. Like I hate that together. What is happening here? So she has now- too much going on. She's pitching these ideas, right? And she said that they said that they would love to have her as the voice to answer the parenting questions. I know. And then and then I fainted. Uh-huh. So they were like, okay, what kind of questions would you like to answer? And she's like, mostly postpartum. It's like, I can't okay. believe that she's still saying this. Okay, well, can you do me a favor? Ask me uh-huh. a parenting question because I am Kate. Okay. Hi, Kate. How do you? Hey, I'm from Michigan. This is New York City. Um, how do you get your kid to eat vegetables? I send them to my mom's house. She's an alcoholic. <laughs> Kate, how do you get your kid to go to sleep at night when she doesn't want to? Uh, Tyler does that. Him and his uh, <laughs> special man friend. They put them both to sleep. 
Oh, okay. Oh, By the way, what you guys are hearing <laughs> is 7 o'clock in New York City. This is real. This is real. Like, I don't even have a red lip on. I have no <laughs> curls in my hair. And this is what happens at 7 o'clock in New York City. Is the this amount insane? of car alarms going off <laughs> right now outside of my house is wild. Can you hear mine? Yeah. This is uh -huh. insane. Why? They need to stop doing this when we podcast. It's always when we podcast. Speaking okay. of parenting advice, though, could yeah. you imagine if you had like an infant and you just put it to sleep at seven o'clock and then everyone started screaming and set their car alarms off? Because you know I that there are people. I lose my mind. Of course. I, I know. I'm like, I don't know if we should still be doing this. No, I know. This is a long time now. Maybe like we could text a nurse friend and be like, thank you. Uh-huh, right? Like, you're wonderful, but I don't think you, we need to be, like, letting off all the car alarms now anymore. Right. It's a lot. It's so loud. Like, I think that we should have just clapped a little. Mm-hmm. Or snapped. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, we're at a poetry <laughs> slam. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay, so now she pitches this idea of this video about, like, and I liked her idea of the video. I did like the idea, but why are you giving them all of this? This is not your job. She doesn't know better. She doesn't know better. She needs to have management. So now at the end of the show, they show like, you know, during the mu during the credits rolling, it's mm -hmm. like uh, Tyler and Kate after she gets out of her meeting and they're like, uh, can you guys kiss? And then they kiss on the street and it's like. And then okay, Tyler um, was ill the rest of the night. Tyler's <laughs> like, I hate that I have to keep kissing my sister. Yeah. And also, I think he's tired of wearing that same sad jacket the entire season you would think that he's tired of that i bet you he's not maybe maybe it's got permanent wrinkles in the elbows like that's oh. how often he wears they're it. distressed <laughs> <laughs> everything okay. about him is distressed <laughs> <laughs> his marriage is distressed but mm -hmm. let's talk about cheyenne okay there's no drama at all i'm gonna tell you right now this is a spoiler alert mm -hmm. there's never drama though really with no. her so they're out of the hospital and Corey is going to come home to tomorrow. Right. Right. And <laughs> she keeps saying like Ryder has to stay in because she can't relapse. Is Ryder using? I don't. I don't. OK. Here's the thing. Is she sick from her illness or is she sick and she's worried about her illness? Yes, that's what I, I think can't figure what, out. I okay. think that's what it is. I think she's sick. And so, like, when she's throwing up and she has a fever, it's bad because she has this. Right. She can, like, go into shock. Right. Right. Okay. But also, like, <laughs> Ryder cannot relapse. I just, listen, I just thought that I was know. so funny. I'm, like, picturing Ryder, like, just, like, running around On the, the streets. streets of South <laughs> Central being, like, anyone got a hit? Uh-huh. No, you're right, though. <laughs> And they're like, Ryder, stay inside. We already told you. You can't relapse, Ryder. <laughs> so Taylor wanted to go to the hospital. I thought that was super sweet. That is so nice of her. And then she's like, no, you're pregnant. You have yeah. to stay home. I like how they kind of take care of each other, though. Me, too, because, like, Corey's not there. And I bet you Cheyenne was texting her, like, how are you doing? How are you feeling? Right. And then she was probably texting Cheyenne the whole time. Like, how is yeah. Ryder? What's happening? Mm -hmm. I think that's nice. Um, Me, too. So now uh, she said that she wants his producers to tell him so he's not like shocked when he reads like any kind of like texts on his phone or like. Sure. So I think that was a pretty good mm -hmm. idea. Now Ryder wakes up and she says she doesn't feel good. And I was like. I know. I'm like, I'm watching squinting. Yeah, I know. I'm like, this bitch is going to relapse. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody get her in from South Central. But, so she's in quarantine, Ryder. She's the original OG quarantine. She is. She is. She's definitely quarantined. This poor little girl. She really didn't feel well either. I know. So now Corey and Taylor come over and uh, or they're coming over. And mm -hmm. Ryder's like painting posters and, you know, because she's excited that her dad's so cute, making signs. Really cute. Right. But so Taylor picks him up from the airport and then uh, they're talking in the car about Ryder being in the hospital. Right. Now, Taylor lies just like crazy. Uh-huh. When she when she was like, oh, Cheyenne wasn't sure she should call you. And she was just like, oh, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know. know. Meanwhile, she was like, no, don't call him. Uh-huh. And she was like trailing off when she was saying like, she oh, was, I don't know. She was <laughs> she was feeling him out. <laughs> uh-huh. And he like did not say anything. He was waiting for her to finish that sentence. Uh huh. And he's like, I didn't hear what you said. And she's like, Oh my god, is it seven o'clock in New York City? Everyone's clapping. <laughs> I can't hear anything that's happening. Uh -huh. 
also, so now they show an aerial view of Cheyenne's house, right? As Roy's right. pulling in. Is she running a used car lot on the side of her house? Right? I don't understand There's what that is. There's traffic cones. There's like an abandoned parking lot. What's I know. Happening? It's very weird. So she, he te- she tells him about the hospital and Corey is cool. He's not mad. He's like, thank you no, so but you much. Know, I didn't think he would be mad. No. Well, here's the thing. She made such a big deal when he was in Mexico with Taylor and he didn't come back that I thought she, he was going to be like, oh, well, now you can handle it on your own, right? When you want well, money now she, from me. She was drinking her haterade back then, though, too. Of course. <laughs> so now I like how Taylor's playing with Ryder in the background. And how cute. Okay, but Taylor says, oh, look, that looks like the ambulance. I know. I know. She means she, well. Right, I know, but Ryder's like, I just got out of the hospital there were you were sick. relapsing listen barbie you were sick and ken dad was there i took care uh, of you you were cold i put a blanket on you and now you're gonna throw an ambulance in my face <laughs> <laughs> okay well let's talk about uh the meat let's talk about the baloney of this episode oh i love baloney you do love baloney amber mm-hmm. is phony baloney so she's sitting in her rental living room Mm-hmm. With her IKEA dresser and a trunk as a a, a, t- a coffee table. Mm-hmm. No, everything is great. She's like, okay, so this is like her voiceover, right? Everything's okay. really great, but I'm pushing away from him ever since he passed the lie detector test, and I didn't feel like he would ever cheat on me or beat me. Thank you. That's exactly what I wrote down. Not word for word. I wrote down that <laughs> she's just not interested in him because he's not chaotic. He's not toxic. Right. She's just not interested. I know. And she's like, I've been hurt before. So they show Gary proposing and <laughs> then they show right before Amber hits Gary. Okay. So that's it's like, okay. what is this going to prove to me? <laughs> that she's, she's like problem yes and then they're like okay here's andrew being really nice and then here's amber yelling at him mm-hmm. okay yep now here's matt proposing <laughs> and here's amber yelling at him <laughs> in a onesie <laughs> like what are you what is this the montage of amber's the worst or is it the montage yes. of amber gets hurt no, it's montage of Amber being the worst. She probably is watching this episode going, uh, guys, you put the wrong montage in. And they're like, that's the only montage we have. Right. All we have is you being abusive. Right. So now she said that she's been burned before. She's been burned because she lit her house on fire. She is wearing a lion taming jacket. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right. It looks like she's going to tame fucking lion. Dimitri. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, well, let me tell you something. (laughs) Siegfried Portwood is out of control (laughs) right now. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, God. Yeah, no, she would that. What? Okay, the (laughs) outfit. Okay, so she has a lion taming slash Paddington (laughs) bear jacket on, right? And then over the knee boots from 10 years ago. Do you remember 10 years ago? I've had those boots. I know. I have. Because we all had them. It was 10 years ago, though. Yeah. Like, stop trying to make them happen. It's over. Oh, my God. It was so funny. So uh, she said that she's had a hard childhood. I believe that. Yeah. She also said, and this is a quote, he really, quote, understands her. No, Really? Mm-hmm. He literally does not speak English. <laughs> Maybe that's what she needs. <laughs> I guess. So she said that. So now the producers are like, have you told him like what's fucking wrong with you? She's like, funny, you should ask. The other night I was <laughs> translating all of my mental illnesses into French. That was like I made my a PowerPoint. <laughs> <laughs> borderline. 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 <laughs> anxiety okay wait do you think that she said borderline and he thought she said border lion and then he bought her the lion taming jet <laughs> he was like why you bought a lion <laughs> well we have to get you an outfit <laughs> do you think that's what happened oh god i'm dying i'm dying She's like right also now. i'm very inconsiderate and abusive <laughs> Also, I don't have custody of my children. Wee <laughs> wee. Oui, oui. <laughs> bon bon. 
Sorry. Oh, Sorry that we're being racist towards the French. I don't mean it. Um, I can't. Okay. So now she wants to work through her trauma with her psychiatrist. Do you? That's not what? a thing. Okay. Not I thing. don't think that's a thing. I think the psychiatrist is like, listen, you could talk all you want. Um, I'm actually not the guy for that. But um, you could just talk while I write your prescription if that makes right, you feel Right. Like, better. here's your medicine. Right. Please take it. I had a psychiatrist and yeah. he'd be like, how are you? And I'm like, I'm feeling, you know, such and such and such. And it's like, okay, well, what do you see your therapist again? Right. And then he would be like, D- you know, do you want me to lower your dose? Like, do you think that you think that what the dose you're on is are working? Are you sleeping? Right. right. Mm-hmm. Do you, are you feeling extra anxious? Right. And then you're like, That's well, it. actually what I feel. And they're like, just answer my questions. Please don't elaborate. He was also, you know what though? My psychiatrist was also like narcoleptic. Oh, that's very interesting. I had a psychiatrist that wanted so badly for me to have like been um, abused, I guess. Okay. And she would just be like, has anyone ever abused you? And then she would just look at me for like 20 minutes. And I'm like, does she know something? I don't know. Right. Like, should I just say, oh, my God, did someone tell her that they touched me when I was little? Right. Right. And they didn't tell me. Right. I'm like, I don't know. Now I'm kind of I'm not sure. That's now funny. that you've stared me down for 20 minutes, mm. I think yes. Wow. Okay, so Dimitri's going to go with her, but he's just going to wait in the waiting room. Why did we have to even say that? Right. They, she she can't do anything alone, ever. <laughs> Noelle, she mm-hmm. said, this is a quote, now it's mm-hmm. time for me to get my shit together. Uh, mm-hmm. no, now that she has a boyfriend? Not now that she lost both of her <laughs> kids. Not when you knived the last guy. You knived the last guy and lost your kid and almost went to jail. And you were like, Mm-mm, still not Mm-mm. ready. Not the and time. Like, you were like, oh, wait, I met a guy online. Now it's time to get oh, yeah. together. Oh, we don't speak the same language. Now's the time. She said mm-hmm. that she can't fall in love with him 100% and she's scared to get hurt. And you know what? He needs to be scared uh, of getting hurt, like very, of like getting fatally. knived. Uh-huh. <laughs> like fatally. The thing is, they're both saying "I love you" already, but she's saying, "I, I can I, see I'm myself not in love with you." Right, right. Well, she said that she's scared because now that he passed the lie detector test, she's gonna have to move into a relationship with him. It's like, what does that mean? Okay, so you know, like right before, mm-hmm. like right after uh, you made Matt do the lie detector test at the strip mall. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then you had to start the relationship. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's like that part of the relationship. Oh, okay. After I flew him here from Czechoslovakia. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Also, she's talking about how abusive her past was. And I'm not saying it wasn't. But I gotta tell you, Bubby really turned out fine. Yeah, no, he Bobby seems He's, really he nice. Seems you great. know what though? I wish that she was around him more though, because I feel like he gives her probably tough love. And no, and I don't think he really does because does. he defends her like crazy in the tabloids. I think he just defends her because that's like his sister. I guess. You know? So she's talking about how her dad was an alcoholic, and you know, the the, the psychiatrist said that noticed that um, maybe. Uh, her dad being an alcoholic might have had something to do with her having like weird relationships with guys. Right. And then she's like, yes, that's, that's why this is so why now like this. she's sobbing. But again, mm-hmm. the tears are not coming. She's a tearless sobber. She's very okay, dehydrated. So now she's like, they're going to know they're going to know. I've been doing this for a few years now, like heavy, uh-huh. heavy, no, so she takes a tissue and she puts it all the way inside of her eyeball. Because she she's did like, what you did last night when you had a habanero on your hand. Remember, <laughs> you exfoliated your eye. <laughs> That's what I she didn't did. Have a full, so I had a little bit of habanero sauce on. <laughs> I had washed my hands, but I guess it didn't all come off. And then yeah. I washed my face in the bathtub. And it was just like um, <laughs> it was like a refreshing mouthwash for my eye. <laughs> I bet you could see so well now. I could, like, I mm-hmm. honestly can see as well as Ash from 90 Day Fiance, if you guys watch Ooh, that Oh, spidey Thank senses. <laughs> all right, so, Mackenzie. Oh, God, I forgot all about her. I already changed the page. Oh, wow. My, she's back from Florida, and Gannon is acting weird, and he's crying alone and pretending that he wasn't, right? And That's he's sad. basically going to sleep over his friend's houses and then having a panic attack and having to come home, right? But so, I don't think she realizes that's a panic attack. Okay, so this is what I will say, and this sounds terrible, so please forgive me. 
Okay. I think that certain people are slightly ignorant to anxiety if they've never really experienced anxiety um, as a lifestyle. Yeah, absolutely. Do you know how many people don't understand me that I feel like I've had to cut out of my life because they just do not understand my anxiety? So I don't think that it's her being like a shitty mom. I just think that like she really doesn't know. She doesn't know. get it. Yeah. She doesn't get it. Just like Josh didn't get what she was going through. Right. So they're confronting him about talking about grandma. And they're like, you never talk about her. You never talk about her. And he's like, yes, I do. And she's like, when? I'm like, oh, my God. Yeah. She she's trying to force him to talk about it. And that's like, but she's also accusing him. I know so he said now he opens up and he says, I feel weird and uncomfortable at other people's houses. I feel like something bad's going to happen and I want to come home. Right. OK, thank you. That's right. what you needed him to say. Yep. Thank and you for being honest. Sure. And then then it's kind of like weird because he said that he's weird around Mackenzie because she's a girl. And then he says, I'm thirsty. <laughs> and she's uh-huh. like, well, you're going to sit here until you could start crying about grandma right in front of us. Yeah, really. Cry right now. <laughs> Not an amber cry, a real cry. A real cry. I want to see a tear. I want, and she, he's like, I can't even. I'm so dehydrated. Right. Maybe, am, maybe Amber's dehydrated. That's, uh, that's so what I think. She said that she's really worried about him and. Uh, she's not worried about Jaxie because she cries hysterically that she wants her nanny. So that's fine. So I think that if you just throw a tantrum, like she'll be happy with you. Right. Right. So she said that if you say you have anxiety, right, because Josh is like, oh, maybe he could go to like the doctor or something. And she's like, if you say you have anxiety, they just put you on meds. And then her meds made her crazy, suicidal, and she wrecked her car. And he's like, now, Josh, Josh, Josh mm-hmm. the, is the voice of reason in this yes. conversation. Mm-hmm. Josh is like, yeah, you keep pushing him. Maybe we could talk to the doctor about it. And she's like, <laughs> no, I think that we need to just believe right. in God. <laughs> and it's like, no, it's so weird because it's like, OK, I get it. If you don't want him on medication, he doesn't have to be. But he could still see a doctor. He could still talk to someone. She probably saw what happened with Chelsea and was like, oh. Oh, that's how you have anxiety. That's how you handle anxiety. Oh, uh, maybe. You mix okay. uppers and downers, uppers and downers, uppers and downers. And then you lose weight, too. <clears throat> oh, that's not actually a bad. Mm-hmm. Anyway, let's move on. Noelle, do you have any gossip for us this week? I got some gossip. It's a lot of kale oriented. There's some other stuff, but it's a lot of kale stuff, too. Okay. So kale made a tweet and it said, I don't know who needs to hear this, but David better never come for my body again. I think David needed to hear that. uh, David did need to hear it. So David's rebuttal is, um, I feel sorry for anyone that ever came for your body. Trust me, I wouldn't touch you with a 10-foot pole. Then he posts a picture of Kale. sick burn, David. I know. Then he posts a picture of Kale in a bathing suit. And he said, I'm sorry, but if this is what you get after having multiple surgeries with lipo, you deserve a refund. Take away the doctor's license. So she puts up a more recent picture of her. And I says, mean, listen, Here, David, in his defense, Dr. Miami should get his license taken away. I mean, just not even for Kale, for just Brianna, general, for everyone, for everything, right. for everything he's ever done. So she puts up a recent picture of herself and said, here, David, when you fat shame me, use a recent picture. Right. So now Janelle chimes in on her Instagram story and she says, I don't know who needs to hear this, but you're a giant compared to me. Let's stand side by side. Don't let me start talking about you cheating on Javi and telling my mom while you got your makeup done. But oh, everybody just finds out now. I told everyone that a long time ago. So much to say, but let me stop. It's like, shut up, Janelle. No one cares about Javi. (laughs) Right. That's what I mean. And then like, stop trying to make Javi happen of all people. (laughs) Javi probably called her and was like, can you give me a little publicity in this? Right. So then Brianna chimes in and I says, can't. I know. And she goes, that girl lost after that horse photo. Sorry. Leave Janelle alone. Brianna. This is a, a message up. to Brianna. Janelle yeah. does not even like you either. You were you got in a fight with her. She cut you I off. Don't, I don't understand why Brianna defends Janelle. It drives me insane. You know That's what I why. mean? She does it to drive you insane. So Kale says, another tweet, let me just be clear. I said what I said directed to David and only David. Whatever y'all deducted on your own is on you. Yeah. I mean, listen, so this is all stemming. In case anyone, no one's following this. A while ago, um, David was fat shaming Kale for wearing a bathing suit. Right. And now Janelle's gained a little bit of weight. Right. 
And then, so now it's like Janelle's posting pictures of herself in a bathing suit. And it's like, yes. okay, well, I mean, we're like the same size. So I right. don't know. Also, your and giant. And I don't think either of them look bad. They don't. But she's like, you're giant. Like, yeah, you're taller. That's the thing. <laughs> They're literally the same size. She's just taller. Just and like, saying. who cares? Who cares? Oh, yeah. No, this is silly. But also, so, David is a monster. So now, Cortland tweets Oh, no, Gail. stop it. Shut up. <laughs> And says, for what it's worth, Kale, I am proud of you for coming so far in your life. You truly are an inspiration to me. And I swear to God, I will forever rock the same color jersey as you. Hashtag respect. What color is Kale's jersey? Um, also, Cortland is hi, hi, hi. Yeah, really? So then now, Deborah, Mama oh, Deb. Stop it. Now Cortland Kale. <laughs> she says, Kale, thank you for showing strength during difficult times. It truly helps others going through rough times, too. Sorry you have to go through this crap. Hashtag me, too. Hashtag no more fear. What? Uh, uh, hashtag do you have any money because my daughter is actually bankrupt? Yeah. Like, what's hashtag happening? Hashtag I need a, a laser facial. A laser <laughs> facelift if you have anything extra. That was great. You know what? Deb and Cortland were the cherry on top of that sunday oh it was amazing so now kale on another note she tweets damn i really ended up with the one i told him not to worry about and then he cheated with every single girl he told me not to worry about everything comes full circle lesson learned so basically what she's saying is god punishes right which is you know the story of your life you have said this forever (laughs) <laughs> so Chris Lopez says, seriously, y'all got to stop telling stories and leaving out what you done, did, and do. So now Chris does a live. I have to tell you, I didn't watch the live, but I want to tell you there's a comment on the picture, and this uh-huh. made me laugh. Tell me. Chris, Ashley oh. Siren's sister okay. from Young and Pregnant, Money comments, mooch. it says, bruh, whole closet is white tees, beaters, and do-rags. <laughs> Just randomly just <laughs> just makes fun of him for no reason. <laughs> Which I don't even I know it's not gossip, but it just made me laugh because it's like, what are you even talking about? That is funny. <laughs> yeah. So now Listen, again the thing about Chris is though, yeah. You he could actually um create like some kind of drama if he wanted to, but like yes. Chris, you're not credible. No That's one's thing. gonna He's believe not credible. you. Right. It's like Stefan in um in Young and Pregnant. It's like at the end of the day, literally not one person besides your mother believes you. Right. You're still a dead. Even the people dad. that hate Kayla, <laughs> Kayla hate him. <laughs> yeah, because he's the worst. I mean, come on. So now Kale, another Kale, not related, puts up uh, a tweet and it says podcasting with Lindsay Chrisley, BRB. So. Wow. Yeah, so maybe she's podcasting again. I don't really know. Right. Yeah, I know they are. They, so they recorded their first podcast. Yeah. And um, it's going to be released soonish. So that's exciting. Yeah, that's exciting. People love Coffee Convo. So there you go. Um, so at um, Amber, Amber and <laughs> Dimitri are still together. Oh, my God. Thank God. So despite being forced so apart worried. due to the pandemic, they're still going strong. Wait, they're so doing they're doing really well. But he's back in wherever he is. So he's back in Belgium and he's okay. posting like different pictures. Um, one says distant gives us a reason to love harder. The other one says um, he, <laughs> he it was her his love for her in French. So she says that it's not that hard being away from him. One of the advantages that Dimitri and I have is that we started our relationship long distance and we learned how to enjoy each other's company right. virtually. So now we're back to doing that again. So they're still together. That's good. That's really good. Um, he also is much safer in Belgium. <laughs> yeah, seriously. So last but not least, I feel really bad for Mackenzie. Yes. Um, she put up a story and it said, I'm going to read it to you. It says, I know many have it worse than me. This isn't a pity party. Life has really thrown me some huge curveballs. I don't know how I've made it here. Obviously, the world knows Josh had an affair last year and then months later, reap reap proposed promised promising he changed and got saved it really made my mom happy and i chose to forgive and trust god she was so happy for him and her last words to him were i'm so proud of you pray for me i was so happy we made it to god before her death 
Then in December, I was already in deep pain and had to watch her take her last breath. And Josh was there for me till two weeks later, things changed. All of a sudden, I was a freak for crying and being depressed. I would lay in bed and wonder why I was so crazy. And that's what made me feel. And that's what he made me feel like. And then life slowly turned into him working all day, coming home to shower, fishing at night. Again, I wondered, like, what's wrong with me? I need him here to hold me so we could be together. So yesterday I made the random decision to pull Josh's call and text logs to find out that one week after my mom died, he started leaving and changing his behavior to find he was texting a woman three to 600 times per month, calling (laughs) her on these nights. He was fishing until 3 a.m. Obviously another affair. So I go to call the number and it was my close cousin, Ashley. What went on? I don't know. My family will never be the same and we are all torn. I was not only hurt by him, but by her. I've cried until my eyes were swollen shut. I am in utter shock. I am now opening my eyes to what a horrible man Josh has been. He has been a lie. And how can you watch your wife lose her mom and make these decisions? I'm sad for my kids. I love Jesus and I love my family. People have tried to tell me for years, Josh doesn't love me and I made excuses for him. But today is the day I walk away. Pray for me that I can function, feel worthy again and find hope. Pray for my kids. I always wanted my family to work so they don't have to live in two different houses. I was 100% committed to Josh and so much I don't understand. I'm so glad for her, though. Oh, because she wouldn't have left him. Yeah, I'm very glad for her. I think this is probably the worst, best thing that ever happened to her. Totally. I completely agree with you. Because she kept saying, I mean, wasn't it like last episode? We were like... She keeps telling people, like, no, he's not good to me. I don't want to be with him. And they're like, you must be confused. Nobody was listening to her. Because it's chilly out. (laughs) Yeah, you're so right, though. Nobody was listening to her. And now it's like, maybe they'll hear her. I'm so glad Mm -hmm. that she got away from him. Yeah, me too. Mm -hmm. Mackenzie, we wish you all the best. And we hope you're okay. Also, what's that phone call like? She's like, hello. And her her cousin's like, hey, y'all. How's it going? Could you imagine? I can't. No. No. I don't want it. I don't even want to know what went on between them. But Josh is disgusting. But he's always been disgusting. He's always been disgusting. But probably nothing much happened between them because, like, she's not a crazy person, unfortunately. Yeah, they were probably just talking. Yeah. She was probably like, well, that wasn't nice. That hurt my feelings. Right. That's all. Yeah. (laughs) She's like, well, don't come here no more. (laughs) Oh, my God. That's all it. Right, That's all my gossip. Make sure you're following us on Instagram and Twitter at Teen Mom Trash Talk on Instagram, Teen Mom Podcast on Twitter. And you can follow me, your host, at Trixie Tuzini, T-R-I-X-I-E-T-U-Z-Z-I-N-I on Instagram and Twitter. And you can check out TracyCarnazzo.com for all of my other podcasts, 90 Day Fiance Trash Talk, Only in New York, and all of the merch that's available for Teen Mom Trash Talk. We have stickers and buttons and pop sockets and t-shirts. We have That was cute. Yeah, thank you. I sing a little song for you. Uh Noel, where could we find you? You could find me at Noe Girl on Twitter or Noe underscore bear eight ten on Instagram. Awesome. Guys, if you're listening and you absolutely love the podcast, please leave us a five star rating and an amazing review telling us what you love about the podcast. We absolutely love you and we would be nowhere without all of our amazing listeners. Thank you guys so much. And we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.